Hello everyone, this is Paris. Welcome to Budget Holex. After the Bitcoin crash of 2018, we were led to believe that a similar crash was impossible. Back in 2018, Bitcoin dropped from $20,000 to $3,000, losing 85% of its value in the process. However, with the advent of institutional investors, the consensus was that a similar drop was impossible. The past month has been a testament to the opposite. In today's video, we're going to talk about why the crypto market crashed, whether Bitcoin, Ether and other altcoins will recover, and what can we expect in terms of price targets for the main cryptocurrencies and how to invest in crypto in the future. Just a small disclaimer here, I'm not a financial advisor and this channel is for information purposes only. When it comes to investing, always do your own research. And if you need further help, seek the advice of a certified professional. Today, I'm having to compete with this guy. So any shares, likes, subscribes or comments will greatly help me. Since you're willing to help me, here are two ways to make money. The first is by signing up to Coinbase and getting $10 with your first $100 deposit. And the second way is signing up to BlockFi. BlockFi is a high interest rate savings account for your cryptocurrencies in which you can earn up to 8.6% APY plus up to $250 with your first deposit. You can also sign up to BlockFi using the link down in the description. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. As we've talked about in the past, there has been a rising concern about Bitcoin mining and ESG practices. Kathy Wood, the CEO of ARK Invest, appeared on Coindesk's consensus on Thursday. She confirmed that Bitcoin has indeed come under pressure due to ESG concerns. It was precipitated by the ESG movement and this notion, which was exacerbated by Elon Musk, that there are some real environmental problems with mining of Bitcoin. A lot of institutional buying went on pause. Elon probably got a few calls from institutions. I noticed that BlackRock is Tesla's number three shareholder and Larry Fink is the CEO. He is focused on ESG and especially on climate change. I'm sure BlackRock registered some complaints and perhaps there are some very large holders in Europe who are extremely sensitive to this. This doesn't mean that Cathy Wood is underplaying the importance of climate change or other concerns such as the poor working conditions in China especially when it comes to coal mines. And she clarifies her position in a Bloomberg Businessweek interview. Hi. The one thing that has changed here, however, is the environmental concerns around uh, Bitcoin in particular have mm -hmm. uh, caused uh, people like Elon Musk to pull away and say, whoa, 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 let, let, me, let me make sure I understand this. And uh, we believe that even this is going to change because, first of all, right now, uh, the percentage of Bitcoin mined with renewables and hydroelectric power is quite substantial. I think in uh, China, it's over 50 percent in renewables. Uh, and we also believe uh, uh, and we wrote a paper uh, in conjunction with Square on this, and we're going to have a conference about it in July. We believe that Bitcoin mining integrated into the distributed grid, and by that I mean solar roofs, power walls in homes, uh, utilities, merchant power producers, uh, starting to include Bitcoin mining in the ecosystem. Why would they do that? They would do it because renewables are intermittent power sources, right? Weather, is it sunny or not? Wind, is it windy or not? And Bitcoin mining could take off if, it's, if there's excess energy uh, uh, from solar being loaded into power walls, it can be offloaded into Bitcoin mining and the whole ecosystem therefore becomes much more economic. If this happens, we believe that the, the uh, adoption of solar is going to accelerate dramatically because there's another profit center associated with it, Bitcoin mining. In that interview, she underlines that Bitcoin mining not only comes from renewable sources for the most part, but that it also further incentivize the research and deployment of renewable energy sources across the board. Another reason for the Bitcoin crash started as a joke then evolved into conspiracy, and then it evolved into science. Simply put, as a friend said, it was a way to get the train to go back to the station so more people could get in. And these people are, of course, are not you and me, but institutional investors. 
How are institutional investors managing to get the train to return back to the station though? To answer this question, we have to get to Bitcoin traders. And of course, the most experienced Bitcoin traders are institutions. Every trader is relying on the same strategies. Everyone knows about Bollinger Bands and moving averages. Back in the 20s and 30s, retail traders were getting wrecked by institutions because institutions could utilize their huge holdings to manipulate prices. In an effort to provide a helping hand, Richard Wyckoff came up with a method for retail investors to protect themselves. To do so, he came up with the idea of the composite man, which in simple terms assumes that every other player in the market is a single person who manipulates the prices, i.e. he grouped all institutions into one single entity. Wyckoff doesn't argue that institutions are good or bad, they're just trying to maximize their profits by taking advantage of a very elaborate price strategy. When the price of an asset is too high, they want to take off profits, but they don't want to make the asset price crash. They just want to keep investors interested. So Wyckoff came up with two price patterns. The first pattern is called the accumulation pattern. It has five phases. Phase A marks the stopping of a previous downtrend. When a market is going down, a large volume of buying will point towards a preliminary support level. This is where investors will try to buy the dip as they will view it as a sign of recovery. At this point, institutional investors massively sell off their positions to take advantage of the increased price. This in turn causes a massive sell-off from retail investors selling their assets, in this case their crypto, back to institutions, reaching the selling climax at point SC. Once these selling pressures have been relieved, a renewed wave of buying from both institutional and retail investors who are now trying to cover their short positions leads us to an automatic rally or AR. Retail investors are fearful after AR, hence prices often fall for a secondary test, ST. In phase B, prices move sideways within the trading range of AR and ST. Institutions will offer push prices above AR and below ST lines to prevent any predictability for retail traders. In phase C, we see a spring, whereby institutional investors trigger a massive drop in price, aiming to shake off remaining paper hand retail investors. This is the point where they take out most of the profits, hence the namesake of the pattern accumulation phase. In phase D, the price starts to rebound, and this is the phase where prices usually break previous resistance lines as the last point of support or LPS point and further going up to the sign of strength point. SOS, SOS points typically have a much higher volume than ARs. The distribution pattern is the second pattern that Wyckoff identified and it usually takes place after the accumulation pattern. Starting with phase A, we have a preliminary supply or PSY wherein retail investors are buying into an appreciating asset. Fear of missing out intensifies at the buying climax, and at this point, institutional investors start selling off their positions, leading to an automated reaction. Phase B in the distribution pattern works similarly to phase B in the accumulation pattern. The price of the underlying asset trades between a specified range or beyond it to keep things interesting. Institutions are selling their assets to retail investors and then rebuying at a lower price. In phase C, we see the upthrust after distribution, which is the counterpart of the spring point in the accumulation phase, which is the counterpart of the spring point in the accumulation phase. This is the highest price point in the distribution pattern. At this point, the goal is to get as many individuals as possible to buy into the asset. This is where FOMO peaks. A more suspicious man could identify this point as the point where Elon tweeted that this is the point where institutional investors will start selling off their assets to retail investors. Phase D again reflects on the accumulation distribution where the institutional holdings are sold off to retail investors. Note that in both the accumulation and the distribution patterns, Phase D will be accompanied with much higher volatility when it comes to crypto markets compared to the stock market. There are some variations to these patterns but these are the main patterns you should keep in mind. We saw the wipe of price patterns in Bitcoin back in 2020, and then we saw them again during the price peak of 2021. If you have any questions about the Wyckoff method, let me know down in the comments, 
And if you want a more elaborate analysis, check out the Coin Bureau's video for which I'll leave a link down in the description. As I mentioned earlier, a reason to cause Bitcoin prices to fall is to allow more people aboard the train. And indeed, we've seen a number of institutional investors getting interested in Bitcoin. On Monday, Ray Dalio revealed that he also owned some Bitcoin. Similarly to Cathy Wood, he also appeared on Coindesk's consensus, but he also said this, which is much more interesting. Bitcoin's greatest risk is its success. Mm. Because as it becomes more, right now, it's not such a big deal. Um, and, you know, fighting it is more of a big deal. Um, and that's, that's it, because it's not that big a deal. Um, as it becomes a bigger deal and more of a threat, let's say people want to sell their bonds and they want to buy Bitcoin. Um, and they want to do that in a bigger way, like buying gold or something in a bigger way. Um, and then there's more transaction. They lose control over that. And that's an existential risk. So, yes, that's connected. Uh, the more we create savings in it, the more um, you might say, I'd rather have Bitcoin than the bond. Personally, I'd rather have Bitcoin than a bond. Um, and, um, and then... The more that happens, um, then it goes into Bitcoin and it doesn't go into credit and then they lose control of it. So, yeah, that's a risk. So Dalio seems to concur with Michael Saylor and views Bitcoin as a solid store of value and as a threat not only to gold, but also to bonds. Carl Icahn also endorsed Bitcoin as a store of value. I'm looking at the whole business. I, I'm not looking at, at, at what to buy necessarily at this time. I, I'm just looking at the whole business and how I might get involved with, with, in it with, with Icon Enterprises in, in, a, in a relatively big way. Because I do think it's here to stay in one form or another. I think the, Relatively the big one, way. What does relatively well, big way mean, Carl? Well, a big way for us would, would not be to buy a few... Uh, coins or something, you know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You know, I'm not going to buy a few coins. It's, it, it tra I don't believe in trading the market if I can help it. You know, I've, uh, I've learned Hundreds over of the Hundreds of millions, years. billions? Is that what we're talking? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it could be. I mean, a big way for us would be, you know, a billion dollars, billion and a half dollars, something like that. But uh, that would be a sort of a big way, I guess, for us. But, but sometimes we go bigger than that, sometimes a lot smaller. But so I, I'm not going to say exactly. But um, it, 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 to, get, to get back to the, I guess you're the way to really get back to the concept. But a lot of these other things, though, I, I think out there are, are overvalued. There's no question about that in, in my mind. But, but that doesn't mean that necessarily and, and i was saying about cryptocurrency to get back to it mm. there will i i don't think there will be a lot of the survivors that are out there trading today in, in it you know i i don't think so i think there's got to be some form of really feeling there's safety and value there kathy wood still thinks that bitcoin could reach five hundred thousand dollars if you want an explanation of why this might be check out my previous video for which i leave a link here and down in the description tldr just a one percent allocation of the s p 500 companies balance sheets into bitcoin could cause this price hike single-handedly and just in case you're interested in why i think ether could reach one hundred and fifty thousand dollars check out this video for which I leave a link here and down in the description. I mean, you at one point, I think back in April, told Dow Jones that it could go to about five hundred thousand dollars. Do you still hold that target? Do you still think that's where we're headed? I, I, we do. I do. Yasin El Mandra is our uh, crypto analyst, and and uh, we we go through soul searching times like this and and scrape the models. And yes, our conviction is as high. The what happens though in the meantime? So here we are at thirty five thousand, Kathy. Do you think we go much lower from here? Uh, you never know how low is low when a market gets very emotional. Uh, a lot of traders see Bitcoin uh, dropping below the two hundred day moving average. 
uh, which right. is which was at forty thousand. Uh, so traders, once that happened, they just dump. Some just uh, dump and run. Uh, I think we're in a capitulation phase. Uh, Yassin has. Uh, a dashboard. We were looking at all the indicators this morning. They are all suggesting that we are in the capitulation phase, which is a really great time to buy, uh, no matter what the asset is. A capitulation phase is buy. It's on sale. Now, am I saying 35,000 is the low? You know, if traders, uh, and there are a lot of speculators in, in Bitcoin, if they are uh, running for the hills just because uh, Bitcoin has broken through a moving average that is important to them. It could continue, but uh, all of our indicators are saying this is capitulation right now. Do you have a low point on your model for Bitcoin? No, these metrics uh, are, are more a, a measure. Uh, are we in a truly capitulation phase? Okay. And it's very detailed. Yassine uses on-chain analysis, which this is the only asset where you can see exactly who's doing what, when, why, and how. Uh, and all of those metrics are saying, this is a capitulation. This is as, as bad as it got during the coronavirus crisis. Kathy Wood said, there's no way of predicting where will be the next low or where will be the next high. This is the reason I keep dollar cost averaging in all assets I believe in, both stocks and cryptocurrencies. Trying to time the market almost never works. Hence, I found out that this is the best strategy for me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button as this helps me immensely with the YouTube algorithm. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Bitcoin crash down in the comments below. Since this is not a purely crypto channel, tune in back on Monday to check out the list of the five best dividend stocks to buy in June 2021. Until we meet again, don't stop investing. Cheers.